Welcome back to Nostalgianomics. To all you wild and crazy people still here in 2023 investing in all this stuff with me. Good luck and Godspeed to us all. But I thought we could talk some strategy going into 2024, okay? I've been getting some comments about the content being lacking lately. And yeah, I've been making less content, obviously. Look, it's Christmas time, it's New Year's time, I got friends in town, I got family in town, my wife's off work. I've been enjoying myself a little bit. So yeah, the content is gonna pick back up going into the new year. Also, I've been getting people say, Alex, you know, not just you, but Pokemon investing content lately is just kind of boring. I mean, how much can you talk about investing in, you know, XYZ set? And all I got to say to that is, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to argue it. Look, investing, it's not sexy. It's not fun and exciting. I mean, do you think Warren Buffett is the most fun, exciting guy on the planet that you can hang out with? Do you really want to go hang out with him on the weekends? I mean, a lot of people probably do just to pick his brain, but you know what I'm talking about. And uh, the same thing's true with investing, guys. I mean, here's the thing. There's goods and bads to it, right? So the, the, the positive side is, if you're wanting to passively invest, it's nice, right? Because you can you know, put money in this stuff. You're not having these wild and crazy swings like we used to a couple of years ago. And you're able to kind of, you know, hands off approach, not really pay attention to everything daily, go on about your life, let it grow in value over time. In a future date, when it rises in value, you can sell that item and take your profits and then rinse and repeat. However, for a lot of this community who's very engaged, actively in discords and comment sections, watches a whole slew of different content creators and every day just, just you know, thirsts for more info and more Pokemon. Um, yeah, investing is going to be very boring for a lot of you folks. And there's nothing you can really be done about that because the whole concept of investing is time, right? Like, you know, new sets only get released every three months and then, you know, some in between with specialty sets. But sets can take up to, you know, two, three years to really age and start to gain value and really see those gains. And so there's a lot of time in between where there's not a lot going on. Now, I mean, I get there's, you know, can be some spikes, there's reprints that happen. Sometimes crazy stuff can happen with the singles in and of that set. But for the most part, there's just not a lot to talk about, right? Investing is really about just letting your money work for you over time. And there's not a lot of like day-to-day -day dealings. And so, yeah, this can be boring for a lot of people. Now, obviously, you know, we have stonks to talk about like One Piece or we have, you know, like 151 or there's the Van Gogh Pikachu, the Pokemon Center Squirtle. There's always different like stonks going on, different TCGs popping up, different hobbies. But for the most part, if you're investing in steel product, yeah, it's going to be boring. There's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing any content creator can do about that. Now, I have decided to not really switch up the content, but definitely add in different styles of content next year to keep the channel fun, exciting, vibrant, not as boring, while still continuing to add in the actual financial talk, the actual investing um, side of things. And so uh, I, I am going to change that up for the viewers because I know that is kind of needed in this community right now. But how, what are the strategies to play this way? So first up, Guys, as boring as it sounds, I still believe the strategy is waiting for good entry points on sealed booster boxes, um, especially now when you can get them in the 70s and 80s, you know, it's the time to pick them up. Um, waiting for reprints, right? When you see this Crown Zenith reprint happen, you can get ETBs at $35. I think it's time to pick them up, right? Um, when you can, you know, find, uh, you know, reprints like we did with, Sword, with Silver Tempest and Lost Origin, and those boxes go from the 150s, 160s, 170s, and they drop down to the low 100s, and they stagnate there, and they don't go any lower, and the supply starts getting eaten up. Yeah, I think that's a play, there was a play there, and there probably still is. Um, and, you know, the strategy continues, right? Like, I don't see anything changing just because Scarlet Violet era started out a little lackluster. Guess what? So did XY. Guess what? So did Sun and Moon, right? Sword and Shield didn't just because it was during the pandemic, but the same thing goes, right? Sword and Shield started out very lackluster when Battle Style started, and then going into, you know, Chilling Rain and other sets that went to like $80 a booster box. And so we've seen this type of thing in every single era, and the prices have recovered and the popularity recovered every single era. And with the amount of people 151 brought back in the hobby and the amount of new uh, subscribers and people that are new to the hobby messaging me about they just started collecting again, things like that, the amount of that I'm still getting 
um, just tells me the hobby's still growing and everything's very strong. So the amount of people that we might be losing from the investing side or maybe, you know, just stop collecting, things like that, I think Pokemon is adding enough new people into the hobby to offset anyone that they have lost. And then obviously people that lost might end up coming back uh, into the hobby in the future, just like I did, right? And so I think we're good there. Now, talking about like the stonks, right? We have to get okay, right? Because I know as investors, you always have that mindset of I'm going to keep this three to five years or five to 10 years or X amount of years, right? We have to get more okay with selling. I'm just going to say it. A lot of these sets that have big pumps out of the gate, right? We always see them give it back. Um, it's why I told everyone when 151 was released, I sold basically almost all of my 151 Pokemon Center Elite Trainer boxes. Everyone's like, Alex, you're not a true investor. You got to hold this stuff long term. I'm like, guys, I, 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 I'm like 99.9% .9 sure you're going to be able to buy these back in the near future for a whole lot less because here's what happens. The hype dies down, the singles die down, the pack price dies down because the ETBs, the UPCs get reprinted. That makes the price per pack down. That lowers the value of the actual uh, PC ETB. A lot of those stamped promo Snorlaxes get out there. They get graded, they get circulated, and they're not as special. So the price of those goes down. All of those drop the price of that product. And so like right now, Right? We saw those ETVs going in like the 150s, 200s, I don't know. I mean, I got out in the 120s, but uh, now they're like, what, in the 70s or 80s? I mean, you're talking about like a 50%, 100% decrease from some of the prices they were at. And guess what? Now you can just go buy them all back as many as you want if you truly want to be invested in them long term. Um, you know, the same thing goes with pretty much anything in the hobby. Whenever you see things come out of the gate, right, and you can take an immediate 30, 50, 70, 100% gain, and you're thinking to yourself, nope, I'm a long-term investor. Guys, it's just not, it's not how this hobby works, right? You can be both, right? You, you can take advantage of short-term upsides, right? Even if you had the mindset of, say, of, of buying a product and saying, I am buying this product, right? for the next five years, okay? You have to remain lucid, you have to remain fluid, and if that product shoots up in three months, even though you thought it was gonna take three years, you have to have the mindset to say, hey, like I was hoping to make you know 50% in three years, I made 50% in three months, I'm gonna take it, right? Because nine times out of 10, probably 99 times out of 100, that product does see a fall, right? Every time things pump, they do see a fall, and you can always just buy back in at those lower prices, right? Now I get that one time out of 10 is the one everyone will message me on and say, Alex, it, it kept going, it never stopped, and now I can't get one, right? It's a Van Gogh Pikachu scenario. And you know, the Van Gogh Pikachu is actually falling too, and I think you will have a, a chance of getting on those at a lower price, but I get it, right? Sometimes, you know, you might have a Romance Dawn situation with One Piece, right? Where it just goes on forever and eternity. Although Romance Dawn was reprinted multiple times, you could have got in multiple times. But we'll say, you know, you didn't and you kept waiting, 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 thought it was going to break below $100, never did. Now it's, you know, to the moon, you can't get one. I get it. There's always going to be that one-off scenario. But on average, if you take this kind of information on average, you're going to end up very well because if, if you, you're in products that see 50% upticks in a month, two months, three months, and you take those gains every time, you're going to end up with a lot more gains overall than you would have made holding all those products and having that one that keeps skyrocketing and that one product because all those other nine are all going to fall and you're going to lose all those gains. And so I think we need to get a lot more okay with taking gains when they're in front of us because what that does is it adds to the overall growth, right? It adds to our overall gains in our overall investments, right? And it'll it'll reduce your cost basis in all the investments. Because here's the thing. Let's say you buy 10 boxes, right, at $100, all right? And they spike to 150 okay? And so you sell at 150 right? You eat your fees, you eat your shipping. Let's say you clear out on $125. So $25, right, you make on every single box, 10 boxes. Okay. Well, now... Let's say that box drops right back to, I don't know, 110, 100, 90, whatever it drops to. Well, now you buy all those whole 10 boxes back, and now your cost basis, because of the profits you already took on the first 10, drops, you know, you got $25 profit cost basis to take out of the new purchase price. So you bought it 110. Well, now, now that, that box costs you 85, right? Now every box there costs you $85. Total, right? Total in that whole investment instead of the 110 that you purchased back into, right? And this can be said with cards, singles, slabs, sealed product. It doesn't matter. 
And so that, that needs to be in your mind, especially if you're wanting to be more of an active investor and less of a passive investor. I get some people, they don't care. They don't have time to deal with all that. They just want to you know, let things sit and take the large gains in the future. And that's fine too. I'm just giving you different options to take going into 2024 because look, every single year, there's going to be different collectibles, different card games, different products and Pokemon, different cards that see spikes. And if you're in those spikes, right? It can be the best thing sometimes to take the gains because 99% of the time after a spike, we do see a crash. Not really, you know, if you can call it a crash, it's definitely a downturn. Like we saw with all the, you know, a lot of the alt arts, a lot of the sun and moon stuff, a lot of the XY stuff. I mean, we saw 50, 100% upticks, but then we saw, you know, 20, 30, 40%, sometimes 50% downticks. And yeah, it looks like a crash, but you're still up overall for the year with a good gain. But again, if you would have sold into that strength, you could have realized all those gains, bought back in now at the lower prices, and be a lot better off, have a lot lower cost basis, and have a lot less risk involved in the items. And so uh, those are the strategies going forward, guys. It's that simple. It's take advantage of the money when it's there, right? It's continue to find good entry points, wait for reprints, get in at the reprints when everything's down, no one wants it anymore, all the, it's out of the limelight, all the hypes and craze is gone. And uh, just make smart financial moves. Don't get don't get caught up in the hype. I know all the big fancy new sets get released, and all the big YouTubers gotta hype it up and tell you to open the product and tell you to buy, buy, buy right now, and it's gonna be gone. And this is this set's different. This is popular. Look at look at all these look at all these shiny cards. Look at all look at all the releases. Look look guys, we we have new new leaks, new drops. Look at these cards. We gotta get them. No, you don't, <laughs> because. In three or six months, everyone's going to have those cards. The pop reports are all going to be, you know, over a thousand. And, uh, you know, people are going to be looking forward to the new set, right? That's, that's what we do in this hobby. And so just don't get don't get uh, wrapped up in all that craze. And uh, you're, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right in this hobby. And so uh, that's all I got today, guys. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. And I'll be back here in a new one soon. I'm out!